so bad. Um, we're going to be talking about the new player progression. Uh, how we think that it's going to affect beginning players coming into the game. How it's going to affect older players, whether the update was worth it or not. Whether Arcwing was the Arcwing overhaul, our thoughts and opinions on that, because, you know, a lot of people don't really care about that, but... Yeah, it's basically going to be talking about the entire update, but the stream's already started halfway through me speaking about that, so hi! Hello. Hello, Luna C, and everyone else in the Twitch chat. What's up? Episode 10 of the podcast. Up, up? <laughs> we got Anivify, Sever Sanity, and Kill Frenzy. Thank you, Oh my me. god, you updated the title! Kill Frenzy. Holy shit! Kill Frenzy in the house. <laughs> man, welcome to the podcast. Kill Frenzy yeah, is man. now hosting us. Thank you, Kill Frenzy, for the host. Of course. Bruh. Okay, so... Update 19, Spectres of the Reels. Main focus was the uh, retarded dogs. The cat they're bros. They're not retarded, they're amazing! The cat bros. Look at the, look at the, look at the stream. Look at the picture. I mean, he has a question. You're just an <laughs> asshole and didn't answer it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It Cat is. bros. <clears throat> Remember, make one now because they're not going to change the ones that you've currently got, but they are going to allow you to keep your abominations, apparently. Yeah. What's up, Glitcher? Um, yeah, so welcome everybody to the podcast. This is our weekly Warframe podcast where we talk about everything which has happened in Warframe in the past week or in the last major update or whatever. Um, so today we're joined by Kill Frenzy, a Twitch Warframe broadcaster who is pretty chill. He's usually on, what time do you usually stream? 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. U.S. Senate Eastern Time. There you go. So if you want to go ahead, check out Kill Frenzy. I would appreciate it a lot because he's another one of the great content creators within the Warframe community, one of the trusted ones. He's been around since since I wasn't even around, so he's been around longer than me. So that, really? That, yeah, you have. Like I was literally, I was a little pleb, mastering it, and I remember coming into your stream sometimes and watching you play whenever I was back in the PS4. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still a little pleb. <laughs> Um, you know, the pleb, you probably have more stuff than me in PC. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about basically Spectres of the Real, which, if I pull away this, uh, Kubru, I knew I was going to type down the wrong image, I took it down the overlay. Uh, basically, this is Spectres of the Real, where it shows every planet, and this is the new beginning player's progression, uh, in Warframe. So, at a first glance, you know, to a near player, this is going to look really cool. Of course, visually, it looks amazingly appealing, right? So it's 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 better than the old one looks wise, but functionality wise, it's like we're we're still like halfway through testing, at least in my opinion. But I have a lot to say about this, but I'm going to let the other guys sort of give their opinions on it first before I hit them with the facts that I've sort of got. Um, so yeah, you guys go ahead and comment on the star chart. So Sev, you've made a new account. You want to play for it? You go first. Um, that was a secret, but okay. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I started a new account and uh, I started working through it. I'm not that far into anything just yet. I'm still working through some of the basic tutorial stuff just because I haven't had the, the time uh, yet to really dedicate into playing. But it's definitely interesting. There's a little bit more tutorial than I remember in the, in the beginning, but I think it could be flushed out a little bit more. I think some of the intricate things of Warframe still aren't really talked about enough, so modding is kind of meh. I don't like the fact that when you first start out, it gives you the uh, damaged version of mods and just kind of gives you those but doesn't really say what the damaged means or anything like that. I think that's kind of really... Honestly, it's really bad. It's all these damaged mods, which are like your Hornet Strike and, and Point Strike, stuff like that, but they're all damaged. That's really bad for a couple reasons. One, those mods are going to get removed in Damage 3.0 anyway. And two... If you want to give people those mods to kind of quote unquote start them out, give them the real mod. That way they don't have to hunt for those mods that you already view as essential. Like you're going to remove them in the future in damage 3.0. Why 
well, why give them out now as a damaged form for them to hunt for the new form later? It's just purposely confusing. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but then getting into the star chart, I kind of like the progression. I think it starts to have you do more missions and really experience the game as you go through. Um, at the same time, I kind of miss the ability to really do what you wanted when you wanted it. So if you had a friend that wanted to take you to a um, to a mission just to get the nav segment, they could. You could really work the work your way around Warframe's map however you wanted to, which just felt more open and more free. And I like that as just the Warframe's theme because I don't really ever think Warframe is ever going to force you into doing something. It doesn't feel like a very restrictive game for most parts of it. This kind of does start to feel like it's more restrictive. Now, once you're once you're finished with uh, you know unlocking everything unlocking all the nodes and, and planets and everything and and maybe that would then be i guess considered the quote-unquote end game but um it does open up more obviously there's more freedom there you can do whatever you want but i think that's something to consider uh okay so uh, like expanding upon that would you say that the star chart is now more straightforward or you say it's more complicated oh it's definitely more complicated definitely more complicated and why do you say that do you say i don't it because know that to me but it's like I Dude. absolutely think the star chart is a lot more complicated. I think. You think? I... Rip. Rip so. Skynet's attacked. Rip? This seems to be a trend, though. Yeah, it's every time we're doing the podcast, which is odd. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think uh, I'll do it while he's sorting his mic. It's difficult. It is definitely difficult, solely because there's no hands down tutorial for the map or the star chart what i do like is the bug fix where if it was an invasion node you can now switch between regular mission and the invasion mode or alert yeah you didn't have that option before which was like i had people messaging me on my video saying i've gone to this location to get something and i can't go on that mission it doesn't exist there i was saying well it's actually bugged at the moment until they fixed out the drop down menus for choosing which regular nightmare or invasion let's say that was a bit annoying but new player wise for the star chart definitely more difficult uh could be made better if throughout the starting planet so like your venus mercury earth stuff if you get some not so much pop-ups but say when you get to your focus and it lets you know what focus does you know, it brings in that banner from the left hand side. Just getting something like that to explain a little thing, tips, mm -hmm. beginner tips that you can maybe switch off. Or it randomly well, it naturally goes off once you've cleared, I don't know, the first couple of planets, because then you've got an understanding of it. Mm. Uh one thing I don't like, and um this is still on the star chart as such, before we go back to Sev, but um derelict vault runs now. You now need ten void tracers. Oh yeah, that that, that was going to be something I was going to talk about because yeah. Well, we'll talk about that later then because that has pissed me right it, it's, off. It's it's a big it's a really big part. Um, so Seb, yeah. are you alive again? Uh, I don't know. Am I? Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, good. So continue <laughs> what did, the point. What, did, what got cut off? Um, new yeah, player okay. experience with the Star Trek. You said it's difficult because, and then Skynet uh -oh. attacked you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. It's. I think it's difficult because it feels more restrictive. It feels like it's it's forcing you to go from one thing to another. It's not as open. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at it, like so, if you just look at Earth, it's showing you. So when you're on E Prime, you then do Mariana, then you do Mantle. Well, now there's a couple other things that open up, but it just feels like it's more. I have. It feels more direct to the path you need to take, but it doesn't feel as explained as before when it was more just as i unlocked the nodes i could see it visually just unlocking the entire planet and i think it still is kind of that but it doesn't look as visually there it visually though it is a stunning look to it i kind of wish though they would have kept some of your basic planets completely unlocked and then maybe added some new things some new planets or something and that's where you start this this kind of thing going in so keep some of your basic ones and at the very least start spacing out some of your resources that people need between four or five basic planets that everyone always has access to um, after you finish the basic tutorial. From what about there, the animation, Seth? You know, what do you say when you unlock the progression through the map, uh, new beginners won't have those nodes lit up. So when you unlock a node, what about 
a visual representation of oh shit I've unlocked it because it'll like light up the pathway and just a little bit of a shine to say oh this is where you can go next now um I mean yes and no I, I think I, I'm not sure I'd have to log back into the other account right now just to check I think it kind of does that but get it might like, also just be because it's a quest thing right now yeah you get like um, little diamond blue pulses like if you have a raid key active you can go on you get like a little diamond blue pulse and that just shows you that you haven't yet completed that yeah. node it doesn't show you necessarily which node you've unlocked, which I can I can understand. Like a new player coming into the game, they might not understand this progression system straight away. Because let, let's be honest, those dots are extremely tiny. You have to zoom the entire way in. And whenever I was first, I was on my beginner's guide account. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go from Earth and then I'm gonna Mars. And whenever I you know got up to the Mars junction, eventually I find out, okay, I have to actually have the once a wet quest done. Where do I find the once a wet quest? Didn't tell me at all. So then I went down to Venus, which was my only other option. Went down to Venus, and then, you know, you're on Venus. Again, you have to go to the junction, and then once you get to the junction of Venus, then you get the once away quest. What I would like to see is more of a direction just point out to the player. Like, I understand that uh, that was the entire point of this update. Like, this entire point of the update was because of the beginning player experience in the first place. It's not as straightforward. There's very little progression, you know, people don't know where to go, things like that. Yes, this adds it to an extent. Um, it's still very confusing. It's not straightforward. It doesn't tell you where you actually have to go. You're kind of, you kind of have to figure that out on your own. So if you have like a little um, notification as Novify said, come on the bottom left, I definitely feel as if that would help out beginning players instead of me having to make another 30 part tutorial showing players okay you have to go here you have to do this you have to get this mod this is where you get this mod from etc etc i also agree with the broken mod part uh you're giving people essential mods in a broken form making them waste resources on these mods which is absolutely stupid i don't know why you do that uh not even just the damage mods because those are you know suresh and hornet strike etc you're giving them those in damage versions but you're also giving warframe mods which are essential so flow streamline continuity stretch all in damage form which just makes it a hell of a lot more complicated because a new player is going to look and want to say okay well do you have stretch and you're going to say oh yeah i have stretch not realize that it's broken they're going to end up leveling up that mod and then completely wasting their cores because it's a broken mod and they're not getting the same effect or benefit which is dumb uh, I know I kind of went off on a rant there, but I want to get Kill Frenzy's input simply because he's going to be looking at... Uh, have you made a new account or have you tried any of it out? Have you been talking to beginning players? How do they feel? Anything like that there coming across in your live streams or, you know, how yeah, do you yeah. feel about it? Um, honestly, not much has changed. I really get the same question on, like, what exactly am I supposed to be doing or, like, you know, what exactly should I be trying to accomplish? So... It's like a lot more direct, that is very true, but at the same time, um, it still confuses new players on um, what to do. And also, it kind of makes it hard for me to um, kind of guide them since I haven't gone through it as a newer player and I don't know exactly um, how the progression for them works out. So, potentially, I will be um, making a new account, but that's going to be sometime in the future. Understandable. Yeah, I definitely get that. So, I as think. It is a bit of, that, that's actually a really good point. It's harder for an older player to guide someone. Yeah, I think he kind of just cut off there again. Have we killed Sev again? Yeah, he died again. Rip, that's really annoying. This is the podcast, yes. Um, Hello. But beyond that, too, I love the detail, though. I love the detail of the map and like the placement of the missions. It looks amazing. It does. Um, one concern, though, is like how exactly. Will it function on consoles? Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Not really a console player, so maybe it's going to work out fine. I'm sure it's going to make it work somehow, but um, it's actually kind of difficult for me to navigate, like, navigate on PC. So um, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to handle, like, you know, the zooming in, zooming out on console and, like, just making the solo not very clunky for them. What I don't want to see them do is add it in with the PS4. You know, I don't want them to use the gimmicky touchpad. That would be really annoying having to use that there to zoom in and zoom out. I would hate, I would hate that. Um, probably just going to be like a left and right analog stick thing though, where you zoom in and zoom out with the right analog stick and then you kind of select your planets with the left. I think that would make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, it's it's not. I, I don't want to bash them because a shit ton of effort went into you know making the star chart, making it look this appealing, you know. Um, yeah. So you can't really bash them for that, but. It's still, it, 
this completely this I like in my mind this entire update was brought out to help the beginning player experience, right? And this left myself seven and Ubify confused whenever they were, you know, giving out their uh, marketing deals with people like Angry Joe and Nick Bunyan, you know. Um, they, they were marketing the game uh, by giving sponsorship to these guys, right? Saying, okay, here, come play Warframe with this update right around the corner, which was meant to improve the beginning player experience with uh, the Star Trek 3.0, which we originally thought was going to have uh, Damage 3.0 as well. But then the Steve said, you know what, that's not actually going to be here. So, you know, it's not really under our scope because, you know, Star Trek 3.0 took up a lot of time, which is understandable. Uh, I'm not going to bash them for that. Whenever Damage 3.0, everyone in the community wants it to be done right because that's going to fix a lot of issues such as uh, power creep, uh, damage scaling, etc., etc. Uh, but again, that's going into a topic that we could talk about forever in these podcasts. Um, we just kind of have to, you know... I guess collect information over time, give it the DE, uh, tell them what we really want, and then let them sort of toy around with that and hope that they do well with Damage 3.0. Um, but yeah, it still leaves the question with Star Trek 3.0, what did you exactly achieve with, with this? And was it actually, you know, was there a point to it? Like, we can jump into the Void Junk, or the, not Void Junctions, but the Void Terrace bit, but... You know, you could have implemented that into the already existing star chart without having to completely rework the star chart. So, do you feel like DE wasted their time with this new star chart? Yes. No, no, yes and no. That's a tough one for me. Yeah, it is a tough yes. one. Well, I'll say no because it looks visually beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because they brought out a shit ton of new stuff like the Void Fishes, the Void Tears. Fair enough, you've got all this making a joke by you put thing in thing and it gives you thing and thing and thing. Um, that's funny and all, but there's no direction. And that's where it all comes back to. Like, if you're putting new stuff in, you need new tutorial for it. You can't just say, here is fucking damage 3.0, but we're not actually going to tell you what's been changed. And I think Kill Frenzy's just been ripped as well. So I think we're about to be ripped, Flynn. You want me? Oh shit! Everybody's gone. Yeah. So. Ooh. Okay, guys. So this podcast is going to be hosted by me and Anubify. Yeah. Until until uh, the others come back and or oh, we both get booted. But um, yeah, they've made it more difficult, mate. Um, there's no direction. There's no clarity. Like if a new player is going into a void fisher for the first time, this should be a tutorial. Ship lost. End of. There should be a tutorial for it. Do you think they're getting hit offline? Um, I don't know. Couldn't be, could they? I think it's he thinks it's Discord. Mm. Well, hmm, that's weird. Well, um, I wonder if we can go into one of your Discord channels. Um, this is up. Oh, Kill Frenzy's back, Seth. Sev online? Sev's offline. Drag Kill Frenzy in here? Nice. Okay. Kill well, Frenzy. Yeah, back. It's, it's mad. I don't know what they've done. Sev's back on? Like, fair enough to patch some things out. And it's on patch what? Spectre's 12, uh, 9 now, sorry. Oh, Pop yeah. fix. Mm -hmm. But the big thing was the tutorial. There was nothing. Like, as a veteran player, all of us here are veterans. Who can honestly say they figured out the fishes straight away? Oh yeah, um, the this is something that we talked about like a long time ago. How to fix the endless grind in Warframe? How to make it feel like less of a grind? And they did it. You know, this is something that could have been done ages ago because the community was always sitting there giving the answer. They finally did it, but did they do it in a way which made the game more enjoyable? We talked about this beforehand where this entire t entirely new system completely takes away from uh, endless missions such as survival, such as defense, and it makes it this boring grind of capture missions, rescue missions, etc. Exterminate missions where you just go in, uh, you find the void tear, sometimes you might not find it, you might miss it. You put in these relics and it's just basically the same thing over again, you kill a bunch of corrupted enemies, uh, you farm up these little ball things, you pick up the ball things, you jump into the portal, put 10 of them in, that seals it, rinse and repeat, and you get your part. It decreases the grind, definitely. You can get the parts that you want a lot faster, but is it enjoyable gameplay? 
Do you enjoy looking for void tears, killing the corrupted enemies who spawn really rapidly, and then, you know, picking up these balls, jumping into a portal, rinse and repeat? Is that fun gameplay to you, or what would you rather do? Would you rather I like do... the different mission types they've added. Like, mm -hmm. you've got externals, you've got captures, some of them could be survivals. That could be. aspect of it is good, you know, because you can have a varying thing. You can either go for the easy option of, like, a capture or an exterm, low-level exterm, which is cool. But the fishes themselves... Are boring. You, you're yeah, gonna have it is. To... To maximize your farm, you need to have a group of four, all with radiant keys, all going for the same thing to increase your chances. So the grind technically hasn't gone. It's just changed its aspect in that I'm you not, need everyone. I'm not everyone. grinding for parts anymore. I'm grinding for keys, which is, or, well, for keys and then for... Uh, Fisher traces for, things. Yeah, for, I just call it dust because it's the same yeah. concept. As <laughs> so we've got to get loads of pixie dust. We've got to get 100 pixie dust to get a radiant key or so, radiant relic, sorry. And if all four of you have that radiant, it gives you, I think, someone showed me the stats. It was something like 34.5% chance of getting those rare drops. But that is, is, that, is, that per key? is that per key? That's per relic, yeah. Right. So the no, 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 no. It's, it's a 34% chance if Overall. everybody has a radiant. All four yeah. of you have a radiant. Right. So you've it's 34% chance that key. one of those is right. the radiant that okay. is the, the piece that you wanted if you're all going for the same thing. And so that's hopefully if you, you all are. use the same key. Because if you didn't, that's fucked as well. Which means, essentially, you're no longer doing any kind of void with a random squad. You're really disincentivized from taking a group of pugs. You would rather just take people from your clan mm -hmm. or people that you already know and have communication with so you yeah. can all say this is what we're farming for that and, is and, it. The, and this was another for part an older player for an existing player that has everything sorry i, I just want to get this out yeah. uh before i rip again um it, for an older player that means any single time that a prime drops good you can you know bring all everybody's resources together farm for that prime there you go bada bing bada boom you get it you're good to go for someone that's farming for a bunch of different things because they don't have all the primes yet, they don't have everything yet, or they're farming for platinum purposes, that's not good. It's a really right. bad system. And this is in the channel, by yeah. the way. This is one of the. Uh, this was also another key point of this update. It was to bring the community together, right? Because like, no, I it's can, done the opposite. Yeah, I can specifically remember De Steve saying that this star chart is going to bring new players and veteran players together. It's done the opposite. You're you're right because veteran players are going to stick with people who they know are on top of the shit, and people who are on top of this stuff, they're going to get their prime frames no problem. They're going to get the new prime drops no problem, easy peasy. Where those new players, the ones who don't have friends, the ones who aren't in the clan, they're going to be left struggling, and that's where, you know, big YouTube communities and Twitch streamers and stuff. That's where they come in and help out those newer players. I get that, but. That's not a way to keep people playing. You know, content creators should be there to help out the, the viewers, show them how to mod weapons and stuff. But whenever your game solely relies on people, um, veteran players, uh, to bring a community together for your game to sort of stay relevant to this new year player, you messed up. That's yeah. just how I look at it. When, well, I think we talked about this before, where I honestly am of the opinion that DE does rely on content creators to get guides out to help people in my weapons to help people learn how to play the game because they don't have a tutorial that really flushes everything out for you and says this is how you do all these different things and and as deep as this game is all the mechanics that are there all the intricate things that are in this game you need something like that to really get that going because if you don't have it you just send people into this world and then throw them in and say i hope you guys learn how to swim real quick because if you don't you're not going to be playing this game very long and that sucks because that's when someone has to turn to YouTube and say, I hope there's a guide here for that or has to get lucky and join a clan where someone will take them under their wing or has to know that they can go to see the guides of the Lotus in the general chat to hopefully help them out and then still get chastised by a bunch of people in general chat for saying, wow, a stupid idiot, just Google it. Like, come the fuck dude. on. <clears throat> I'm going to be a douche about it because the new player experience, if someone's got the first tier of key, say a lift key, and I've got a radiant key, yeah, for the tower ones, we'll call mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So I've I've spent a lot of time getting 100 uh, tracers. I've 
got a radiant key. He's gone into this void fissure on public, completely randoms. They've gone in with the shittest keys imaginable because that's all they've got as a new player. I'm there trying to farm something that has now dragged me down, so my chances have been slimmed even further because they don't have the stuff to farm. And then they've, say, got a key that I'll put it into a shitty context, a former Lex Prime blueprint and something else, something really crappy. I'm potentially giving them really good primes, and they're not even working for them. Yeah, that that's a that's an extremely I've good point. I've had to farm a hundred traces, which has taken me what three, four missions to do, and they've gone in with a shitty key, MR2, and got a really rare prime part. And that's again, that's, that's something that nice. that's again something that the community played or played about, complained about. Um, well, I, I remember. They do need to sort it, but at the same time, I, I know they want us all to interact, but this Fishers is literally divided. That I'd prefer to go with people who I know that have the same relics as me. We can go do the Void Traces together, Radiant our keys together, and use our keys together. So I, I'd be stuck with a group of three other people to see that farming through to the end. Whereas... If you go on public, you're going to get some people who don't take keys in. Some people yeah. don't have them at all. Yeah, exactly. And those people don't get to choose a reward, do they? If they don't bring in a relic. No, they don't, you, get, to cho they don't get to don't choose the reward. Yeah. yeah, but say if two of us had Radiant, well, four of us had Radiant, there's a big chance that we can get a rare drop. And because you can now choose which drop you get, the odds are like a lot better for you so if we've got three idiots with standard relics that haven't been radiant or whatever upgraded and i've done mine they're essentially leeching off my farming which yeah i, I feel like, i feel like an asshole supposed... half the time because yeah. i won't bring a key sometimes and then i just feel like a dick so i, I do like one run i'm like oh shit i have to bring something or else i'm a complete asshole that's what but i, I don't mean wanna... i don't want to be a dick but like at the same time so... it's like that yeah, so I'd have to go with a group of friends so that I can say, hey, guys, I'm not bringing a key this time. I want to farm up as much as I can here so that I could start making radiant keys, and then we can really farm for this. Because I don't want to farm for something with these keys because then I'll have to go farm more of them. Like, especially for some of my T3 keys, you know, I don't want to burn them now when, when I could save them up and then get them later once I've collected the, uh, the dust that I need, the traces that I need to make them radiant, where now I have a good chance of getting the reward that I want. Sean just said about uh, if you go into the recruit tab, you know, you don't know who you're getting. You don't know, like, if, like, when we stream, so myself, Kill Frenzy, and Flynn, mm -hmm. while we're streaming, we can say to the group, right, we're going to farm void traces together, we're going to upgrade the, this relic together, and we're going to use this relic to get a prime part together. But to get that void traces, you've got to sacrifice a key. So you've got to sacrifice one key to get between what, ten and twenty, maybe thirty void traces at a time. That's some serious fucking grind. Quick tip is to bring uh, bring Necros and Hydroid. Hydroid, that, yeah, that does that does work. And then kind of stall when you're like last. So what I've been doing is getting to ninety percent. And then just telling everybody not to put anything else in, stall and get as many to That's drop as possible, and then yeah. collect them after that. I got 24 in one run once, which was nice. Yeah, but the void trace is a good idea, but the the farming aspect is there. But if you're going to do um, prime farming, whatever squad you decide to go with, you're all going to have to see it through to the end. Like before, 20 minutes would have got you a rotation C item on the old stuff. Now you're looking nearly an hour to maximize out your void traces. So you've got to go through, grind out the void traces, get the radiant thing, and then do the corresponding mission to it. So you're looking about an, an hour realistically between radiant keys if you want to do rare prime farming, which is a fucking long time. And they still haven't even fixed... So key share has always been something that you could do in Warframe, but it's still not fixed to being a viable thing to do given that people can essentially say, yeah, I have that key. It happened in my, in my Mesa farm. 
someone what came into our key share did the first run and then left because they didn't have a key now luckily we had a couple of cool people with us and we got ended up getting mesa during this key share but this person comes in says they have a key and then there's no way to prove that unless you like go to trade chat and then even then you don't like have any guarantee that they'll use it pretty easy system to have is when you go in if you're doing a quote unquote key share have some kind of mode where the person that's leading the party can set it up so that if you're doing a key share it shows everybody's key that they're using kind of like it shows your your dragon key if you're using one of those um so that everybody yeah, knows yeah. these are the keys that i have and if it's a key share for a mission that doesn't use everyone's key like uh like maybe a mesa key share or something like that it automatically applies all four of those keys you run through all four of those missions whether you need the part or not you run through those missions now if you want to leave in the middle you lose your key that's it everyone that's part <laughs> of that party though gets it now that would suck a little bit but at least it's going to guarantee that key shares are key shares they're not haha i took your keys now i'm leaving <laughs> It's a, it's a huge amount of trust, or you go do it with your friends. And that's a yeah. huge problem. That, again, divides the community. And it's a big problem I had whenever I was first starting out in the game. I would be hosting key shares. People would be scumbags. They would leave. And it's just, it's not fun. Um, Kill Frenzy. Yes. Being in top of your community, how have they taken to the, um, the changes to the void? Did they find it more of a grind? uh what's your opinion on the whole key sharing thing etc etc basically what we just talked about okay talk about your twitch community how they have taken to it etc okay so right now the whole uh, red system doesn't really affect me too much because i already have everything i need i have like multiple sets of stuff so um i'm not really stressed out about trying to get anything but when Necros prime rolls around that's when it's going to become a problem and actually, it's already kind of affected me because, you know, new players, I don't turn down anybody. It doesn't matter if you're mastering 0, um, 22, whatever. It doesn't matter. But somebody wanted help getting, I don't know, whichever prime piece, right? And another member of the party didn't have any relics of the same class. So if he were to run with us, he wouldn't even be able to benefit, you know, um, the squad or um, get anything for himself. So... Now it's just um, a lot harder to make sure that everybody can run the mission and also benefit from it, you know? Like, I didn't mind using my keys to, um, you know, help other players as long as I had, you know, a sufficient amount to make sure I didn't run on myself. Right. So you, sometimes, so right. You were, you're okay with hosting keys for other players, and what's happening now is there's a divide in the player base even more because if a player doesn't have a relic matching, let's say the tier, because that's basically yes. what it is. So the the meet the Mio, so T1, T2, T3, T4. If they mm -hmm. didn't have a relic for that tier, then they wouldn't get anything at all from that mission, and that's a problem they exactly. have. Yeah. Um, and now we can't really run the mission unless you know somebody's got to go ahead and like you know give up basically any type of reward. I mean, yeah. it's even more than that though, because if you're going for a specific thing, it doesn't matter if they have the right tier of key. If they're not going to benefit you getting your, let's just say, mag systems, do you really want them in your party? Because now you have to say, well, now we're saying we're going to take this person who isn't benefiting our farm at all. And maybe they maybe they don't have the right tier. Maybe they don't have the right key. Maybe they don't have a radiant key. And now you're saying, sorry, you're not good enough. It's kind of like when, and, and I wasn't here for this, but I, I read a lot about it um, uh, from some forums and stuff where they had a problem with, showing the level of gear that you were using based on your mods and stuff and people would legitimately just say sorry your gear isn't high enough to be in this party oh the conclave yeah yeah that the content rating yeah like that's what it echoes to me that like that's what it just reminds me of and whether that's true or not i don't know but that's what it seems like that's um yeah it, it's it's a feeling of deja vu bringing that back really it's like, uh, it's like, it's like, on one hand, you fixed, you fixed the grind to a degree. You fixed it for the veteran players, but you've made it worse. That moth is in my room again. Holy shit, there's a moth on my screen. Um, Does it terrify you? I hate moths. This guy was in here. Like, if you ask Daniel the Demon, this moth was in here on 
Thursday, and I, I, I shit myself. But, um, yeah. Um, you fix the grind for veteran players. Cool. Newer players, you've made it worse because they have to go in, farm a bunch of keys, farm void traces. Uh, we wanted to talk about the dragon keys, which is... It's a big part of the game because it basically defines a uh, veteran player from a newer player, if you if you get me, because these corrupted mods are like pretty much essential to all your builds, right? So yeah. fleet mm -hmm. expertise, uh, narrow minded, heavy caliber, etc., etc. If you don't have those, you're not going to be able to keep up with the, uh, you know, those high end high end missions like sorties and stuff. You're not going to going to be able to perform in those missions because you don't have those mods you're not like playing to your warframe strengths or anything you're kind of just being a sitting duck and dying a lot um so they've, they've made it worse in a sense where you actually have to go in uh farm up these void relics go in farm up the void traces spend uh void traces on actually crafting the research in the dojo in the orican lab so you have to you have to be in a clan or you have to create a clan make the oracle then you have to make the oracle lab and then you have to purchase or research the uh the dragon keys the four dragon keys then you have to purchase them for twenty five thousand credits you have to bring it back into your foundry then you have to go ahead and farm more void traces i think it's a hundred it's either a hundred or ten sev uh i think it's ten ten yes so, it's, so it's, it's ten void traces per key so we have to give those up and then nanospores or ferrite, ferrite stuff like that. Thanks. Ferrite. Uh, I could be wrong. It's 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 a really 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 bad it's, system. It's one of those two and anyway. What's really sad about it is that, in my opinion, uh, the the corrupted mods are the best thing in the game. Yeah. Because and, and I don't mean like they're the best mods in the game, even if even if that might be true. I just mean that they're the best way to balance something in the game. Just giving someone a flat thirty percent of anything is always going to be one of those things where it's like if you take something out maybe it becomes essential giving someone flat shield boost going to be you know one of those quote unquote essential mods and i don't mean you have to have it on i mean it's like there's no downside to it so it's kind of like why not put that on there's no sacrifice to losing it so why not put it on kind of yeah. like whenever i make a build i'm like i might as well put prime continuity on because that's a shitload of duration i could throw in unless i'm going for a minimum duration build prime continuity is going to be in there same thing with prime flow if I can fit it in there, I'm going to because there's no downside. Corrupted mods are amazing because they give you that choice of, do I really want to nerf my range here? I'm, you know, I'm making a, a conscious decision to do something. They are build diversity, just incarnate. And if they focused on them more and made more mods like that, expanded on the corrupted mods, something like that, that would be amazing because now all of a sudden you can really diversify a build if you have something that's going to increase your power uh like the amount of power you have the amount of energy you have massively but decrease something else maybe it decreases some of your survivability or something like that it's it's such a cool thing to do and play around with and balance the game around that instead of just flat stat bonuses and stuff like that you could even apply more to weapons than they already do and stuff it's just such a great concept that isn't expanded on enough yeah um one would like ask the question as why would you even bother implementing this into the game if you weren't going to go back and take looks at that like that was that was implemented in like ages ago man and the only time that they really added anything in there was transient fortitude right that was the last thing that was added in there and even at that that was ages ago so you know one would ask why are you leaving that there you know like i, I get it it's working there like this is abandoned ship but you shouldn't be abandoning content that you threw into your game right so um you know as you said extremely good way to balance the game because you could be throwing in things which uh increase power duration but you have less efficiency things like that completely make a like safe uh duration based frame like i don't know loki you could have one extremely long ass invisibility for a 100 energy cast, right? And that would be super cool, like a two minute long invisibility. That would be insane. Um, something of the sort. Um, but because they haven't implemented these extra mods, right? Then there's no way for you to actually do that. There's no way for you to actually experiment. And people are going to like gravitate towards these essential mods, which 
wrecks the game in a sense because they're always just going to go for the most beneficial thing. Just like people are always going to go to Draco to, you know, farm up their weapons XP, but it doesn't exist anymore. But they're always going to go to the most efficient thing. And until you add in a sense of, uh, okay, you can have this, but you lose this, then you're not going to balance your game out. There's not going to be something in there which makes players sort of reluctant to try and, I guess, use something in particular, if you get what I mean. Uh... I just had an idea on how you could sort of, I guess, not steal missions away, but make it so that uh, abusing things is um, less likely. But we'll get back on to the topic. Uh, another thing that really pisses me off with the new star chart is that you can actually you can't actually access the uh, derelict until you hit Saturn on the new star chart. So if you go into the new star chart, that is how many planets in one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight planets. So you have to be on your eighth planet before you can even go in and get those corrupted mods. That's just a fun fact. And game builds rip. Yeah. I mean, and game builds early platinum is actually a really good place to go for early platinum. So mm. the fact that they took that out sucks because if you're eight planets in, theoretically, you'd have a chunk of Warframes that you would like to try to get. And how do you get them if you can't get early platinum? I mean, you could farm for nightmare mods, but that's difficult now too because there's no more nightmare alerts uh, or nightmare mission, nightmare nodes. Once you complete all of the nodes on a on a planet, there's no more like nightmare mission that's always there for you to go farm, you know, early platinum. And that sucks because that was one of the one of the first tips that I'd ever put out of hey, you know, you want that warframe or the weapon slots? They're not that much platinum, so go farm three of these mods up, sell them, and then there you go. You might be able to get two or you know one warframe and one weapon slot or two weapon slots technically with that, and that's that's great for early game before you can get real access to those prime parts. And even still, because you can more directly farm for prime parts, those prices should be dropping. I mean, Ash went from a frame that was 210, 220 platinum at the lowest to I just saw him sell for 110 earlier this week that's crazy like that's a full set for 110 platinum which i mean if you're trying to buy anything that that just becomes an issue you know i mean five five warframe slots and that's it i think the corrupted mods might be on the increase though maybe so. that corrupted mods will probably go up solely due to the farming aspect of them void traces needed Eight planets unlocked before you can get to the derelicts. I would definitely, as a player out there, if you've got a few of the spare ones, try your luck. Max out your blind rages, max out your transient fortitudes, uh, heavy calibers, and stuff. And then, I didn't even know until like two days ago that they actually changed Dragon Keys too. Yeah, exactly. We noticed that solely on into the update because I, I was like, I was, Surprise, um, motherfucker. yeah, I was like, literally, I was, someone asked me in stream, it's like, how did I get this mod? I'm like, okay, you go into the market, you buy this key. Oh, wait, where's this key? And then some guy in my chat says it's in the working lab. So I went into my dojo. Uh, I ran over to the Tenno lab and I'm like, uh, okay, they're not in the Tenno lab. So I was like, okay, um, you know, I completely forgot there's an Oregon lab. It's the solar, solar rails lab. And so I, I come back out and I'm like, okay, the mop is still on my screen. Um, I go out and like, okay, so it must be in the market. Go back out, go back in the market again. Uh, sit trying to find it. Still can't find it. Go back in, go to Oregon Lab because, the, of course, viewers correct me because they're the homies. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they're there and they're like void traces. So I have to get my entire clan in to come and contribute 100 uh, void traces because we're the biggest tier of clans. So it's 100 void traces for each of the keys. Get that done. We got it done like there and then, which is pretty badass. Um, and then, you know, they had the research, which, again, puts more time waiting in the game, which is <laughs> could be called grind, I don't know. Uh, wait frame? Wait frame, um, frame, which can deter players. It's happened in the past. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's like there's nowhere pointing to that. Nowhere. You know, it doesn't, there's no progression thing. There's no thing in the junctions that says... Go farm up a corrupted mod. Go to the derelict. There's a there's a mission that says uh, locate and kill. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Lephantis. Yeah, but it doesn't mention anything about uh, getting your corrupted mods, right? So, you know, it's like 
Why? Wait, okay, wait, there is. Collect any free mods from Orc and... Oh, that's, uh, that's Drift mods. So, yeah, exactly, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing telling you to go in and farm up Corrupted mods, which are basically, you know, essential mods which can make or break your Warframe. So, yeah, good job, DE. That's, uh, big part, <laughs> big part of your game, which you didn't include, you know? It's, it's triggering. I, I don't know. Go, go, go for it, guys. It is, tr it is triggering, but... We, we we get angry at them, but what do we what do we expect? Should we expect info now, or should we just expect what's been really. happening for the past what five well six big content updates, which is they'll upload the shit and then you'll find out the shit on your own. <laughs> yep. Like I figured out the void keys, uh, the derelict keys, pretty quick because I actually do like to farm the stuff, but now it's like. Well, I've got to sacrifice a relic to get void traces to make that key to do that mission. It's like they're adding more and more grind. It's like, I've got to go do this to then get the stuff to build this. Then I can go on the mission to get that. It's like, great! <laughs> and I'm the one that likes the grind. And even I think it's like over the top. I mean... I still miss doing void runs, honestly. Like I, I, I like same here. Years. I liked void. Void was one of my favorite things about the game, and I know that seems weird because it's like, you know, where we spent the most of our time. But I loved before they overloaded survivals, and I said this in the last one. Before they overloaded every single drop, then being on your T three survival rotation C, I loved T three survival. It was my favorite place to be because I was doing it for my own purposes, just because I wanted to do it, and if I wanted to stop, I could. And then it was, well, new prime parts there. Okay, new prime parts there. Okay, new prime parts there. And then at a certain point, it became all of the top selling prime parts were all on T3 rotation C of a survival in the void. And you were just running hours at a time in there to the point that now I hate doing survivals as uh, just in general for this for the entire game because I've been so burned out from it that now I just don't want to do them anymore. And that sucks so much because I still love... The idea of that game mode, you're really putting yourself to the test. How far can I go? The endless mission is awesome. Plus, they buff the void, which makes it even more difficult. Uh, and I didn't know that until recently. But the void, in general, the enemies are a lot more difficult. They were one-shotting a lot of my frames that are full build and everything. And I just didn't understand it at the time. But and, and I'm not sure if they announced that they were buffing that. But a lot of the enemies in the void are significantly uh, more difficult. Yeah. So just not just to kill, but they hit a lot harder. We're probably going to get void traces in there, like someone said. Something should... needs to drop from there, because right now there's nothing in that. You know, I, no, I heard calls... someone came into my stream and says that they were putting prime mods in rotation in there, and I was like, no way they're doing that. No, that would destroy, that would destroy the Warframe market. Plat would go out the window. They, would, they will never be stupid enough. This game will never be stupid enough to sacrifice or even <laughs> compromise Prime what, mods. If, what if they did primed aura mods in there? Aura mods won't be so bad, but I think the main thing they'll do is they'll add traces as a reward. They'll add traces as a reward throughout there, and possibly something new in the near future. I don't think it's a coincidence they've left so many missions for void in there without thinking about the future. Because you think what, they're gonna forget they... about derelict again? I, I don't think they're going to forget about it, but I think they've got something sneaky planned. Because if you look at the way the uh, void now, um, the pathways for the void, there's like three, I think there's three different stems of void missions that can be accessed from different locations. And I think they're going to have something related to there. That's just my hunch. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be the prime frame, but I think it's potentially a future quest for that void. Just going to ruin it for you in advance. So, I don't know. Yeah. I've, like, I've, I've, I... Sorry. Yeah, as I say, for now, definitely they'll patch it out in probably the next month or two and add the void traces as a drop. I'm really concerned because 
the derelict was an awesome thing that was a really cool idea and then they just put like three prime mods in or three prime parts in there and then just completely forgot about it all the new frames that would drop like Saren prime how much fucking sense would it make to put all of Saren prime you know the infested based warframe which even in the like the launch trailer they just said you know it came to me like a proverb fight infested with infested or whatever it was i don't remember the, that that part but um like that would make so much sense drop her in the derelict it gives you a reason to to use her in that sense but then no you can't do that because you can just make those keys you don't have to farm for them therefore it's not as much grind therefore not as much chance of people buying prime access which is the only explanation and i know that sounds really pessimistic that sounds like you know calling de out or whatever but let's be honest what else could it be what else is the incentive to dropping those things in the void what else is the incentive to dropping you know another part on that t3 rotation c survival other than let's just continue to up the grind of this warframe because if we put it in the derelict you can just make those keys and if you just make those keys then that's less grind so less grind equals less chance of people saying fuck it i'm just gonna buy it well you've got sabotage you've got was it sabotage, exterm, capture? Is it capture in the derelicts as well? I think so. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you've got those missions that don't really drop anything at all. You you know you've got defense and survival, and people use exterm for um, Oricon derelict vault runs because it's the smaller tile set. But capture got... is better for vault runs. Just saying. Uh, I'll argue that with you another time, sir. <laughs> but, you know, you've got sabotage, and that's a real letdown because they could have, they did miss a big trick. They could have added primes to them. There was no reason they couldn't have done it. And, like, Sarin, she was supposed to be this poison specialist that would fight against the infested, but they kind of went the opposite way and made her one of the most grindiest frames to ever get. Survival For a long released. time, I didn't even know mobile defense um existed in like the Oregon can dare, like man. Yeah, but what do they give you? They don't give you anything. That's the bad thing about it. They've they've missed so many tricks, and it's like yeah, they they abandoned the void, they abandoned but... Archwing for a while. They've that's why I'm I'm so pessimistic of them continuing. To, yep. like, I just think they're just going to say, fuck it. Like, you know, we're not using the void anymore for anything. And then that just yeah. becomes the new derelict. Like, They've maybe they drop one or two the... things there, but you don't use it anymore unless you're trying to get a cool background for an image for a thumbnail. <laughs> They've got no reason. Players out there now have no real reason to do those mission nodes in the void. Oh, you can deploy an, uh, an extractor there if you do all the missions. Argon crystals. But Yay! Like, you need to do you need to do then, one mission, and you can get five to ten argon crystals. Yeah. You, like just doing one extermination, I was getting consistently five argon crystals at least, if not ten. So do one extermination, maybe two on any level. You don't need to farm argon crystals after that. I did on the on the stream I did like just a little bit ago. I think like Monday this week. After that stream, and that was all I had farmed on Void. Like the like since this rework. And, and I had zero Argon Crystals to start. I had over 84 Argon Crystals from less than a few hours of going into the Void. So it's barely even incentivizing me to do it because once I have three or four, I'm good on Argon Crystals. The biggest thing that you need to take away from it is do not abandon it because if you make it so... Everything in the game should have a purpose. And the last time it was like, did you really need to do Archwing? No, because you could get to the required MR to have everything in the game without it. Now oh. you've got the void that is redundant as such. It is redundant, and now you've got a derelict that, in essence, is too grindy to grind for when the rewards that you'd be going after are a corrupted mod, when as you could buy it off the market for plat. Can I just caveat that I don't want Titania or any other like weapon or frame to, to be like a ton of Argon Crystals because that would be really annoying and I think that would piss a lot of people off. Just saying, like I don't want the, the Argon Crystal cost to increase. I don't want the rewards you get for Argon Crystals to decrease, though they probably should. But throwing that out there, I don't want people to be like, oh, you're 
Diggy, he sees this and they're like, oh, you get so many Argon Crystals from a few runs? Okay, well, clearly we should make this next frame cost 80 Argon Crystals. Yeah, the, they'll probably do something cheeky and put Titania in bloody the void or something. Or even though we saw her in the trailer on Earth. <laughs> it's like, she, she can't drop from Earth. Exodus. Yeah. Like her, like her husband. <laughs> Flynn. <laughs> Sorry, I'm off topic here. Yeah. How the Listen, fuck are you the... going to get corrosive damage? <laughs> God damn it. He said, I'm struggling on Neptune. Any tips? Flynn went corrosive. I went magnetic and toxin. <laughs> Flynn's got a wall of text. Like, it's tired. I'm late. But yeah, like, definitely don't abandon the content. If they abandon the content, what does that promote to their players don't abandon it there use logic more for fuck's sake each of these planets as well should in retrospect have a moon associated with it because some of these planets in the solar system actually do have moons some many of them are moons. moons so they need to start looking at moons definitely in the future um, some of the some of our planets in this are moons though just so you yeah know. definitely look at um upping the ante for newer new players experience like the thing that you did to do with focus to do with a little banner that comes in to give them a helpful tip about focus for the day and how to obtain focus is great apply that to the star map for new players have it quit or stop after about mr2 mr3 because then they realistically don't need many more tips Hopefully, that will sort, hopefully that will sort you don't that need out. many more tips. Yeah, that hopefully, <clears throat> if they can access it via the codex to like refresh their memory on actions, that should de definitely be one category in the codex actions. Um, so, say if you pick um, damage types, there should be a section in there that explains damage types. You know, instead of having to go, right, I'm just going to alt-tab out my game, I'm now going to have to go on the wiki and see what the hell I'm doing, because I don't know. Because the stuff that should be in the game, that is in pretty much every other game, doesn't exist. The game visually is beautiful, Archwing's very nice, the star map's very nice, the void fish is fair enough for grindy, but we get around that by going with people we know. The voids become redundant, don't abandon it, derelicts become very grindy for what it actually offers up as a reward and stick a fork in me i'm done <laughs> okay i'm gonna ask a killer question um I, I this is gonna get a mixed response right because it's it's more of a question that is not really directly related to the game but what do you think is going on over at the because with the amount of mess ups they've had, you know, the constant hot fixes, uh, you know, completely forgetting things and updates, really silly things that shouldn't be happening are happening. And this has been like this entire year, you know, has it been this Chinese company that's bought them out, uh, setting these deadlines that which realistically they can't keep up with? Um, is it people pressuring them to do things do you think there's a lot of um tension going over going on over in the business or what do you guys think's happening because i've been playing this game for almost three years right and this is this is only new this is new like this has never happened before the recent sort of yeah, it's events. definitely that company that bought them out you think so yep solely because before we had a few bugs and stuff, but the company that actually bought them out have not so much been found out, but people have witnessed this company buying other companies before, and they have a habit of trying to make as much cash as quickly as possible and then pretty much doing like a game abandonment. And I think they are putting a massive strain on DE, so the focus isn't so much on the players, it's on them saying, well, you're only getting money out of us if you achieve this, 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 and this, when the realis realistic time scales are, are the, the fucking beyond it. 
hence why this update has been delayed, 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 because they're wanting to put so much stuff in, and that doesn't just come from them wanting to give us loads of stuff. It's like any movie that gets made. If the bigger the budget, the less power you have over it. They've literally yielded all the power to the company that bought them out, and they take their orders from them. So, so yeah, they've fucked it. <laughs> uh, we should go to Kill Friends next. Kill Friends? Okay, um... Well, let me start by saying this. Um, the little retarded little pets things they have going on, or they had going on, has brought me more joy. Like, this thing, like, just watching it walk around with his hand up in the air or his arm all bent backwards has brought me more joy than anything in what's called Spectres of the Rail. Mm-hmm. So there's one nice thing. But to be serious, though, there are, like, a lot of... Well, this update... At least it wasn't something like Red Doom where they had like audio issues on release, which I don't understand like how that got through. Then again, I'm not a game developer, so I don't U18 know how. Team was pre Chinese people, by the way. Pre Chinese yeah. company. So I don't really know what's going on like over at D, but these bugs and glitches, I don't know, they were a little bit more excusable to me personally. What do you think about the time that they released the uh, update where they were bringing in the new Syndicate mods <clears throat> and they completely forgot to put them in the game? Oh yeah, the time Belgatir came in, he bought the same inventory too. Once again, it's like there's mistakes, but it's like I don't know how DE pulls it off. Like, you know, mistakes happen, but I'm just saying there are some mistakes like that where I have no idea how they um, screwed that one up. Yeah. I think Bugs do happen, but um, the scale at which they've done it is beyond a joke. Nine patches, well, ten patches already for update two. Uh, let's go back to an hour check-in, you know. Um, uh, how did that get passed? Yeah. So, I have to say, I honestly can't say that I, I, I can say I don't, I don't think this was the fault of the buyout or anything like that. I honestly look at it as I think Tenocon was bigger than they thought it would be because it got so big and because it took so much from all of them and trying to get everything ready for that plus everything ready for other things it's kind of like when you divide your attention between four different things everything gets a quarter of your attention at that point so when you do that you go from dividing all of your attention onto that one thing that you're working on or the two things that you're working on to now you have this thing that's looming and this thing that's here and i honestly think now that that's done I really think they need to take a step back and not just start focusing on the next Tenocon. They need to start focusing on the game and really dedicate their attention to it to start preventing those things from happening again because they are so easy to happen. Honestly, I, as much as I joke and, and, and you know talk about the, the mess up with those mods not coming out, it's such an easy mistake to make. It's one person didn't check before they shipped. Whoops, that was his job. Should it have been double checked? Absolutely. Did it probably get double checked? Maybe. And did the person just not see it? Maybe they overlooked it. I don't know. I, they're not that person. Not my job. So whatever. But I think it's a really big thing to, to kind of give a little bit of leeway there. But I think I think in the end, maybe if they want to do things like Ten of Con, they need to hire people that are dedicated to that instead of taking people from what they're already doing. Because that's when you have these kind of mistakes. That's when you end up with tons of bugs. And I still think we should go back to the start the public test server that we talked about last one last time and catch, let's just say they catch a quarter of the bugs or they catch a quarter of the flaws with Lunaro before it ships. Now you're producing a more refined experience for all these new players that you're trying to market to instead of them coming in and saying, wow, there's a lot of glitches in this. Do I really want to play a glitched out game? I mean, I'd rather go play something that's ref refined. And... You know, if, if they have the choice between playing Warframe or playing something that they were already playing, because Warframe already is a huge investment. Like when you play Warframe, you're essentially saying, I am going to grind for hours and hours to get something that I want. And I'm I'm recognizing that. I know that's going to be the case. I'm okay with that. And I'm willing to take that challenge towards starting to progress in this game. It's really hard to get someone to do that. Don't make it harder by saying, plus there's a lot of glitches, there's a lot of bugs. I know they care. That's t like that's absolute. It's obvious that they care, but they need to they need to 
take the effort, take, take the extra mile, I guess, and, and show it a little bit more. And, and I know they say it, they, they, they are so passionate about this game and I know that they can do it. It's just a matter of really taking that step to do it. I don't mind bugs, but when, as I said, the mission nodes, when you used to be able to choose between alert, normal mission, nightmare mission or whatever, when they bypassed that, they didn't even think yeah, to Yeah, exactly. That was, that was something already in the game, you know? That was something so bad, you know, because people were actually being stopped from farming warframes because yeah. an invasion was going on on that planet node and you couldn't get rid of the invasion for the regular mission. That sort of a bug isn't acceptable. I don't mind glitches on bug uh, glitches on missions where I don't know I'll get booted or stuff like that. I don't mind those sort of bugs, but when it's actually affecting people's progression in the game, those sort of bugs are not acceptable because that was a progression stopper. That was Major. a. I forgot what boss it was. I think it was on Neptune. Uh, where does Loki spawn? It's the hyena Neptune, pack. Hyena isn't pack it? Neptune, yeah. Um, so someone was actually messaging me saying, I can't do that mission. It just keeps giving me Foroid. <clears throat> and I was like, uh, it's a bug with the game. And it had been in the game for like, I think, like 11 days. <laughs> Fucking, that's 11 days stopping someone progressing through the game. Is that acceptable? And I know there was a lot of glitches with the junctions too, which is also a pretty big um, progression stopper. Yeah. 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 Not kind of in progress, like Xmas kills, uh, things like that. Oh yeah, I can't progress. I, I, I haven't been able to progress on like four different things. They're all like Man. partially done. Pick up 20 mods. Dude, I, like, I pick up that in a mission. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't mind bugs, but when it's progression based bugs, these are the things they should be ironing out because they want people to have the best experience. They want people to progress. They want people to be delve deeper into the game and therefore become hooked. And when people can't do that, that's when people turn nasty. Like certain bugs with visuals like the Cava Bros or whatever we're going to call them, the Abominations, they're funny bugs. They're acceptable bugs because it's not game-breaking bugs. The progression based ones are game breaking books. That's yeah. where you, you uh, lose um, players. Not to discredit DE in any way, but some of the game's core mechanics actually come from bugs. Example, multi shot. Original intention <laughs> is it was meant to actually text more ammo. Uh, yep. Nova, her M prime, whenever you yep. equip negative power strength. It wasn't actually meant to speed enemies up, but it did it anyway, and now it's been something that's stuck in the game. You know? So. Scott said he intended that. Really? Yeah, it's because... it's not a bad thing, but they do need to. It's not me having to go. I love what they're doing, and I love the start. I love the update itself, but there was a hell of a lot of progression bugs, and those ones, like they say, yes, we run it through fifty computers to uh, try and locate bugs. Are you telling me not one of them checked the possibility of changing the mission node on an invasion? This is shit that was supposed to be solid. You know, it didn't it didn't have that draw back on the last star map at all. And it's not me having a go. I really do love the game, but those sort of bugs shouldn't make it through into the game because that is bad. Once you start doing that, update eighteen, I think. What was what was in the war within? What was was Equinox just in that as well? Or close to that? I think it like, was. It was either Equinox or Anaros. Yeah, I think it was Equinox. It was. And no, it was Ivara. I- Ivara, Rubico. Uh, and... I couldn't progress because I actually couldn't level it up. But that was one thing. Only one thing bad, really, about uh, the second dream. There was only minor things. This update has been train wreck after train wreck. And I really do, I feel sorry for them because I know it's not their intention. I feel sorry for them because I think it's coming from up above. And they were forced to release this. They were. Like the Steve even said on Reddit, um, it was the deadlines. And they, sh- they should have so, delayed it. D, I still love you. 
but you do need to grow a pair of balls and turn around to whoever's telling you to release bugged out shit and tell them to go fuck themselves. You can't. Yeah, they probably have a contract that binds them in for X well, amount of years. The war within will be the deal breaker for me. Honestly, that... it would need to be an increase in staffing, but the problem with that is that right now I feel like they have a a relatively, for the, for the size of this game, a relatively small staff that is very passionate about the game. They put in tons of time. Oh, yeah into this update and, and they're the not gonna they're not gonna hire much. people they're not gonna hire people that don't show that same passion yeah well, but i think you can start to progress if you start using something like a pts and give some people access to that even if it's like a few hundred people get them access to it so that now all of a sudden you can start getting some of the things a little bit earlier and you can start getting feedback on things so it's not releasing something and having the caveat that if people don't like it, you might just revert. Yeah, well, we do. We need that server that we talked about last week, Seth. Yep. We a, a, a PTS. It, it's it's really. I mean, I, I can't say it's really simple, but it's a simple idea. It's a simple concept where we can go in, test out the dev builds, running different scenarios, trying different things, because it's not so much like they'd have to say, "Oh, we would have to pay you." No, I think. The loyalist veterans, especially content creators as well, would gladly go and test it. That becomes real early access for the content creators that are given yeah. "quote unquote" early access now. If you're a sponsored creator as well, so we can kind of take a bit off them because a lot of people find bugs. Like accidentally just, breaking the game isn't fun. Yeah, accident, yeah, it is fun when it's on that sort of stuff. Like, I broke, when I started the uh, Spectres of the Rail, within one hour and 30 minutes, I'd broken my game. Repeatedly? Yeah, repeatedly. I think I'd broken it three times. It's And it's okay <laughs> if that kind of stuff happens in a PTS, because then it's, hey, before this ships, yep. just so you know, if I do this, it breaks the game. Oh, I shit, would, we'll fix I that. Would, yep, I would not be bothered if I was breaking the game on that. When I'm breaking it while I'm streaming and having to log out, that's annoying me. Oh yeah, because that shows your email as well. They really yeah. need to fix yeah. that. But no, I go to my break screen, and then when you go to your break screen, people think, oh, well, he's not coming back, so I'll leave. Yeah, it, like, and sometimes you're not fast enough, because sometimes it's just like a server yeah. timeout. I know that sometimes that's completely out of their control, but they need to, in some way, should perform mecha, so you have to press a button before it shows your email. Yeah. Uh, if they, if for they streamers. Do that, if they do that test server thing, and even if, you know... It is glitchy and it is buggy and they want feedback. I would not be bothered. I really wouldn't be bothered. I would test it. I would find ways to break it. If I've learned anything on Warframe, I'm good at breaking shit. Because <laughs> it's happening every day at the moment. So do it. Get the content creators. Get veteran <laughs> players in that can find the stuff. And then, you know, give us... A couple of days access to upcoming stuff and we'll tell you what's wrong with it what needs nerfing what needs buffing what needs to be changed this is where i fucked up it's not hard it's really not hard and then you won't get epically messed up stuff like what's happening at the moment but the war within quest will make or break me <laughs> i'll either stay kind of neutral or i'll head full-blown demon then i'll just start smashing stuff i really hope it's good i like wholeheartedly i know they can do really well they showed it with the second dream and i've spoken to the rebecca about this you know she completely agrees this game needs more second dream uh we had a conversation with her and we we're like okay we feel this is what needs to happen for the game to go in a better direction because they would occasionally ask us uh what we feel about the game and you know some content creators will be like okay this is what we feel uh we need moving forward and i'm just like it needs more second dream and the reason for that being is because it completely blew everybody away it was something completely unexpected I, like a shit ton of effort was put into it it was so it was so simple but so good at the same time it was just a quest and it had new tile sets it had you know, all this cool, glowy, fancy stuff. It had laser beams. It had the stalker, you know, assets that were already in your game. And it's like, 
you know, you've been planning this game out for literally three years. You're bound to have some assets made that you could use in like a like a storyline or a or a, a raid or something which would bring a little bit more life to it, give people something to do, something to play, something to come back to. But you're derping up. Um I really am interested to know if um the E listen to these podcasts because I've sent the first couple episodes to D Rebecca. But the things that we say in the podcast, you'd think that they would sort of feed back to us, and we don't really get that at all. Um, so I'm going to start sending these podcasts to D.E. Drew and see if he says anything about it. Um, but yeah. Good um, luck. Good luck. Kill Frenzy. Mm-hmm. What do you want to see in the game? Um, I want to see anything, man. Something, because for me personally, it's been like kind of a content drought. You know, Lenar was <laughs> Lenar was drought. fun for a bit, man. But you know, at the same time, um, the stream kind of got tired of real quickly. Like you know, people would get upset once they got their ass kicked into the ground. So, um, yeah, you know, Lenar was fun for a bit. Then it's like, hey, yeah, we don't want to play that. <laughs> so I don't want to play it myself. So um, then we had this part right here, which for me personally, um, you know, the new star chart looks cool, looks amazing, but. You know, the junctions give me kind of an objective. But at the same time, it's not really any content that gets me excited. Um, Kavads are cool, but, you know, the whole mutant things were kind of a lot cool. Like, these things <laughs> amuse the hell out of me, man. So, yeah, part one and part two didn't really do much for me. They haven't really released uh, much content in between. Are you so, saying you weren't super excited about glitch kavats? Because like that's, I mean, that was totally intended. No, no, exactly. Like I love these things. Like this thing made me laugh so hard on the stream. Just watching it walk around just puts a smile on my face. Like know the content, man. So part three, I'm really, really going to be reliant on when it comes to content because right now I'm just not really entertained. Um, Fissures, like you were saying earlier, like. I'm surprised about how quickly I got bored of it. <laughs> I miss already, like, I do miss his files, and I didn't think I would. I didn't yeah. think I would miss, you know. It's like, it's like on paper, on paper, Void Fisher seemed like a great idea. In reality and gameplay, boring as hell. You know, you the fix the grind, is, but make it boring. The problem is running a five minute mission over and over again has always been boring. Exactly. It's why when they announced the, uh, the farm for Ivara, you were kind of like, oh, cool, I get to do a different mission. I'm going to do some spies. And you run like seven of them, and you're like, fuck this. I'm so fucking done with doing spies already. And I feel like it's the same thing we would always do with survival, but it's because a survival is going to take you an hour, hour and a half to go through that it doesn't feel like it happens as quickly. Here you hmm. do your seven or eight uh, runs, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done with Warframe tonight. What else can I do? What I think they need to do a lot more is they need to put rewards behind daily rotations. Um, no. No, you don't agree with that. I hate daily rotations. I hate daily rewards um, in any game. I think because I, although it incentivizes you to go on, it also becomes this chore. Like there's games that I straight up quit, but I'll do my dailies on it right. for like a yep. month or two months just because I want to keep doing it just in case I want to come back. And then I realize later on I'm only doing this for the dailies, and then I completely get fed up with the game. I get pissed at it, and I don't want to go back anymore because I feel like they just kind of extorted me into staying for longer than I should have. Whereas if they just let me kind of leave at my leisure and then come back, I'm not losing anything if I didn't do those dailies for a month or anything like that. I'm not losing anything. I'm more just kind of shifting my attention to something else for a bit, and then I can come back when I'm ready uh, rather than feeling kind of unwelcome because I haven't done my dailies or whatever else. There's a lot of games that rely on dailies, and I just think it's too much at this point. Right, okay. See, I, I would I would say that really dailies is the one thing that I do to enjoy the game now. I mean, I'm, I'm waking up every morning doing my stream, I do my sorties, uh, occasionally I do raids with a clan, I do my syndicates, I do sometimes the alerts, and now I just do raids, or not raids, um, the, the void tissues for the rest of the day. And doing void tissues for about, let's say it takes me three hours to do off my dailies, for another six hours, you know, there's... Yeah. Content is definitely lacking there, and, you know, if you were the, you know, give me more sort of daily content where I'm able to, 
you know, do something at a specific time of day to keep my viewers engaged and also to keep myself engaged in the game, I find that would be a lot better. I'm just talking want, like gameplay wise. You want you know? six hours of dailies. I mean, I know it sounds stupid, but it's not really. I don't think just that's feasible for anyone as a, as a as a normal player, casual player that has a nine to five job, that comes home and wants to relax with an hour of Warframe. The daily sortie works, and I think that's right. that's a good thing to do. Maybe a daily raid if you wanted to do that as well. Okay. The more dailies you add, the more grind you just added to someone's day. Coming home exhausted from work and saying, I want to relax with some Warframe is fine. And then you add more dailies, it's, I need to log into Warframe and get all my dailies done. Or if you get home close to when the server is going to reset and you haven't had time to play since then, it's, oh shit, I have to get my dailies done before server reset or else I'm fucked. Right, because I missed my dailies what, what today. Now I'm behind. What if there weren't like necessary, or, like necessary dailies? You know, like a read isn't like a necessary daily. If you get what I mean. It, I mean, it depends. The daily in that case kind of is necessary if you want to keep getting the rewards and you want to keep growing. Then they are sorties. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep getting your cores or whatever else, they kind of are necessary. If you don't put them as a necessary quote unquote thing, if they, if you don't make the reward enough, then it, there's no point to them anyway. Right. So then that, that would kind of come back to the come back to the topic of there's not enough content in the game to make any of the daily content really viable because even though you're getting all this daily stuff like the cores the arcans etc there's nothing there's nothing to use it in so yeah warframe and even though it's not a daily man 19 extract sucks for casual players oh yeah yeah that's a completely different conversation <laughs> That might be a daily for some people. Yeah, that is because I like, to get literally... my one nitane today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I have like I have like seventy of them stacked up, but that's just because for a, for a while while I, while I was sponsored, I kept getting things for free. I bought um, because I didn't I, I contributed all the all the stuff that I could towards research in the dojo, but from that point on, I didn't put nitane into Wukong because I just bought them for plot because I decided it was easier for me to just sell a couple of prime sets and then just buy Wukong. And that's kind of what I've done for a while. The new prime part drop in price because of the new farm system means that it's a lot harder to do that now. Like it's, it's a lot more difficult for me to justify just selling some sets when like selling one set might get me 20 platinum. Like that's, that's a crushing blow to those prices. It's almost more worth it to just sell everything for ducats. Oh yeah, um, I think we're gonna end the podcast here though. Should we get questions? Uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions in chat, um, specifically something that will somewhat spark another conversation, please. Uh, you're still on Flynn? Uh, no, Elite Frost. This is the podcast, bro. I have a question. Um, how do you think they're gonna handle Necros Prime? Do you think potentially they're gonna make a new relic that you have to farm for before you come on the mission, or you know? actually have a chance of getting the job. Say that again? Yeah. Oh, um, like, how do you think they're going to do a Necros Prime? Do you think there's a chance that they're going to add a new relic that you have to farm for before you can even have a chance of getting Necros Prime? I think they'll take out the mag parts and put Necros Prime in there. Yep. That would be the simplest option. Um... I, I don't know. And if I go for it, if you're there, rip and if I. Um, as far as the scorch beacon, it looks like it's a bug that they know is broken, but it's not fixed. And now I'm seeing. Okay, so Monday apparently it got fixed. It's fixed. Defend the machine in the designated area. Ten waves. Scan chroma five times, and it's done. If you have all the parts, that is. If not, the hunt continues. But you still need the Scorch Beacon, so it wasn't actually fixed. I don't know. Check out that, and maybe you'll get your answer there for the Scorch Beacon. But that is the Scorch Beacon. Um, I am a little curious with the mag parts being in the drop table. Kind of with them there, it completes the drop table. Um, so when mag comes out, it feels like there's going to be some spots open. So I'm not sure what's going to take those spots, if not Necros Prime especially because Necro's Prime coming out should make Nyx go in the vault. Yeah. 
which is weird. Yeah, um, we definitely don't want any like empty slots. Unless you're repeats. saying that the reward is going to be a form of blueprint again, which is just wonderful. Oh yeah. yeah Replayable yeah. quests is a cool topic too, but that's something that they're quote unquote working on. That's, that's going to come out quote been unquote working soon. On for a TM. Year. De that, soon. Yeah. Oh, it's been worked on. That's been quote unquote worked on for more than a year. Yeah. That was something that was apparently worked on for a while before I joined, and I joined about a year ago. So I, I also I, believe too that you know D needs more focus too on like the content releases and like what they plan on doing. Do you think what they need is just like a, a level-headed person to sort of go in and organize? Or do you think do you think it they would have help. that with D Steve? I think that's Steve. Yeah, yeah I would I would think that's Steve as well. But at at the same time, Steve's been really really busy with the oh, Star yeah. Chart rework. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why part of the the quality if you want to call it that has suffered for a bit yeah i would really like i'm i'm i, I kind of feel like a fanboy anytime i mention the steve because he is he, he's literally someone that i look up to in the company because he's been around for that long and like literally everything he says in dev streams is something wise or entertaining or funny he's like my favorite member of the sort of dev crew if you go what i mean um it would be really cool to have him on a podcast i know the chances of that happen are pretty minimal but I mean, he's a really cool guy to sort of, I guess, listen to, if you get what I mean. Like, the interviews that you get with him are really cool. Um, but yeah, next week we're getting Prozymon. Uh, a lot of you guys requested we get Prozymon, so we're going to get him on. I, I Next week is going to be a, an extremely interesting podcast, because he's going to be... I, I know he's one of those extremely challenging type of people, because um, he likes to argue his point, and he has like a lot of ideas for the game, so it's really going to be fun. Um, I know Seb knows Bruzam as well, so and bruzam has been raiding my streams uh, whenever he finishes, so we all kind of are, we're making this community great again, hashtag make Warframe great again, and before, before we end the stream, I just want to point out, it takes 5 million credits to buy 1,000 fireworks. What? You're saying there's something that I can do with my credits now? It takes 5 million credits to buy 1,000 fireworks. I mean, I have 17 million credits. And you put 5 million for 1,000. So? Fireworks are expensive, man. There's a lot of work that goes into those. Man! They are so hyped, though. New players can't afford the fireworks. They can't be hype. What are they? I mean, they shouldn't be hype yet. You gotta get to MR twenty two before you can be hype. Man, you have a you have a ways to go, Flynn. It feels bad, man. Anyway, cool. thank you guys for watching today's podcast. I know it was kind of. I feel like tonight's podcast was a little bit depressing because we pointed out more negative than positive. I I don't know, but um yeah, thank you guys for watching the podcast. Go follow all of us on Twitch, on YouTube, Twitter. Instagram, Snapchat, whatever these guys have, you know, if you go to their social media pages, uh, I'll put their Twitter Twitter handles in the description below. You should be able to get everything from there. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Stay awesome. I will see you guys in the next podcast. Bye bye.